This is the NVIDIA Shield Portable. Some of you out there might remember this. Uh, NVIDIA released this Android-powered handheld in 2013, so at the time of making this video, it's around 10 years old. It's 2024, and I wanted to see if we could still game and run emulators on this device. And given that it is powered by an ARM chip that's 10 years old, I'm not expecting that much from it, but I was actually pretty surprised after booting this thing up, getting everything charged up, everything installed, we can actually still use this device. Now I do wanna mention that this was sent over by a viewer a couple years ago and uh, it's actually in really good condition. Everything on this is functional, battery still holds a really good charge. I think NVIDIA did a pretty good job building this thing because it's been used quite a bit and it's still holding up just fine. And I gotta say, it's actually really comfortable to hang on to. It's definitely very odd when you take a look at it now in 2024, but it did serve its purpose quite well. And I'm actually running stock firmware on this. When this was released, it was kind of the heyday for Android ROMs. I know I was flashing all kinds of stuff to my Android phones. I did not flash anything to this. And to tell you the truth, I haven't done any research. There is probably a custom ROM out there that overclocks this Tegra 4 CPU because when these Tegra chips were released, everybody was all over them. Now, when it comes to I.O., on the back side here, we've got a mini HDMI output. We can mirror the display or we can go into kind of console mode, which just basically takes us over to GeForce Now on a bigger screen. It also supported a micro SD card. We've got micro USB for charging and syncing the device, plus a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And you might notice we've also got a vent above all of that I.O., and that's because this had an active cooling system built in. And at the time this was released, believe it or not, this Tegra 4 chip was actually a pretty high clock coming in at 1.9 gigahertz. Got our intake up here at the front. So we'll pull air in across the board and cool that whole system off. Taking a look at the overall specs here, like I mentioned, this is powered by the Tegra 4 SoC. It's a quad-core A15 chip up to 1.9 gigahertz. And when it comes to the GPU, this actually had 72 GeForce graphics cores, and it was the most powerful ARM GPU on the market or mobile GPU at the time. We've got two gigabytes of LP DDR3 RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, which was quite a bit back in the day, micro SD card slot, a five inch 720p IPS display, 7,350 milliamp hour battery. Also had five gigahertz Wi-Fi because they were really touting GeForce Now. And this is still running Android 5.1. Remember, we're on Android 14 now with our phones. Uh, Android 15 is coming in a couple months. So yeah, we're working with a pretty old operating system also. And just to give you an idea of the form factor, I've got the Ain Odin Mini, which is coming in so much more powerful than this, and it is an Android-based system. Plus, I kind of want to just give you an idea beside the Steam Deck. We're definitely not seeing a lot of handhelds on the market like this today. But again, I gotta say, this is really comfortable. It really does kind of hug your palms. And around back here, you got a place to rest your finger. You can reach these triggers, no problem at all got access to all of the buttons on the unit. And plus we've got a built-in touch screen here in case you needed to use the touch screen for something, but we've got the home button and back button plus our NVIDIA button right on the front of the handheld. Built-in front-facing stereo speakers. They're a bit tinny, but they do get pretty loud. But I'd say the main thing here, given that it's so old with that software, is there's a lot of apps that just won't start up, including YouTube. Tells me I need to go over to the Chrome browser to watch YouTube. And through there, yeah, I can watch videos, no problem at all. I've still got access to Google Play, but remember, we're working with a 32-bit operating system. And even though the apps are here, even though we can install apps, it doesn't mean that every single app is going to start up properly. So for instance, one game that usually works on all Android systems that I've ever tested is Real Racing 3. Unfortunately, it keeps crashing on me. I've uninstalled it, reinstalled it, tried an older version. I just can't get it to run here. I guess with the new updates to the app, it just won't work on Android 5.1 or maybe even just the Tegra 4 chip. We do have HDMI out. We can mirror the display or go into what they call console mode. And from console mode, it'll basically just bring up GeForce Now for us. And we could always use this as kind of a shield controller for the NVIDIA Shield TV. So it's just going to bring up the controller icon and a link up to that so you can use this directly on the Shield TV. But back in the day with this device, there were a few really awesome perks, like the fact that we could run Half-Life 2. I believe Borderlands was also ported over here. And you'd enter Tegra Zone. You'd have to buy the game. I've got Half-Life 2 installed. And this is one that just works. So it'll boot right up. Another game that worked just fine was Minecraft. Of course, Minecraft works on everything. 
But yeah, we did have a few awesome PC ports come over to these Tegra devices like the Shield tablet, also obviously the handheld, I believe Borderlands, Half-Life 2, there are a few others. And at the time, this was kind of never seen before, a real PC game running on an ARM chip or just a mobile device that you could carry around in your pocket. But yeah, it still runs really well on the Tegra 4. I believe we're at 30 FPS. And if I had to guess, it's kind of a mix of low and medium settings here. It's not bad at 720p, but one of the main things a lot of people loved about this device was emulation. RetroArch from the Google Play Store still boots up and runs, but there are a few cores I can't get working, like the Flycast core, so uh, Dreamcast isn't working right now. I did try Raycast, the older app, but unfortunately it just won't work. I get crashes, sometimes the game goes to the menu and then just stops altogether. But the lower end stuff still works really well here. I've got some PlayStation 1 running at 60 FPS using RetroArch. And again, it's a 32-bit operating system. So apps like Dolphin, we really can't get running anymore because they're all 64-bit with all of the newer chips on the market. But I was able to get PSP up and running using PPSSPP. We do not have access to the Vulkan backend. Back when this was released, Vulkan wasn't even a thing. We've only got OpenGL, never came over to the Tegra chips. And even then, some of the easier to emulate PSP games still gave us issues on the Tegra 4. And moving over to something like Chains of Olympus, we did have to turn frame skip on. So instead of running at 60, we're running at 30, and you can still see it stuttering quite a bit. So obviously, there's a lot of Android applications that just aren't working with a device this old, but one that still works really well, and even though we've got Wi-Fi 5, is a really good experience, Steam Link on the Shield handheld. So I've got this connected to my main gaming PC in the house. Obviously, we're on Wi-Fi with the handheld, but with my gaming PC, I've always got it set up with a wired connection connected over Ethernet. That way we can alleviate as much latency as possible. And with it set up like this, I've been able to play most of my PC games without an issue. Now playing, let's say a fighting game online connected through Steam Link just isn't a good idea because there is that latency there. But with most of the games that I personally like to play, especially single player games, they work great on the Shield handheld using Steam Link. And I'm really glad that Steam Link is still supported by this device because even 10 years later, you can still get some use out of this device, even though there's a lot of Android applications that just aren't gonna work on this anymore. Now, if you wanted to play some lower end Android games, I'm sure we could get a lot of stuff working, you know, like clicker games and things like that. But going with, let's say Genshin Impact or even Call of Duty Mobile, Unfortunately, you can't even get them to install on this thing. Another thing I kind of wanted to compare here was some benchmarks on this device versus a newer Android phone. But even 3D Mark has been updated so much that none of the benchmarks are supported by the Tegra 4 anymore. And for the newer GPU benchmarks that we run on something like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, those are basically Vulkan benchmarks. And again, this does not support Vulkan. But either way, I've still been having a lot of fun with this device, kind of breaking it back out. Really surprised that this battery's holding up. And one thing that I'm even more surprised about is the fact that we can actually get any of these Android apps to work with Android 5.1. And don't get me wrong, when this thing was released, it was a powerhouse. It was the most powerful Android device on the market, be it a phone or a tablet or even a handheld like this. That Tegra 4 did put down some really good performance. And unfortunately, you know, the Tegra line kind of died off. Qualcomm has that Snapdragon that's just beating everything in the Android market right now. But for its time, this was one of the best handhelds out. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Don't run out and buy one of these. I mean, you saw what we can do with it. It's really not that much. Lower end emulators, Steam Link, that kind of stuff's going to work. But you're super limited given we've got 10 year old hardware and 10 year old software on this device. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Let us know in the comments below if you own one of these while it was relevant. What was your favorite game to play? What did you do with this device? Was it emulation? Was it native Android games? Those Tegra Zone games like uh, Half-Life 2? Let us know in the comments. And like always, thanks for watching.